Hello and welcome to the Halo Forge Epidemic. This is Oakley Hydef and I'm here to bring you another video which is going to be covering infection. Now this one is going to be covering infection rooms. I know I've already covered this before in a video but that one was about basic room layout and the way I did that video is I kind of talked about the theory behind the different kinds of rooms. I categorized them. I talked about the benefits and all that um, but I did that through the use of pictures and sketches and I didn't really show you guys how to build the rooms in Forge. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, which I think is a crucial step for you guys, is getting your ideas onto basically the Forge uh, palette into Forge World. So we're going to start in the very beginning where I talked about the different rooms uh, as in the videos. So the first rooms we're going to be talking about are one entrance rooms. And I would recommend you guys go back and watch that uh, basic room layout video as it was very detailed. It contained a lot of useful information. Um, but essentially what you have for the one entrance rooms is going to be a hallway, an L room, which is over here, window room, and then another T room that I didn't include in this video. But we'll go over this. So basically here you have is your, um, this is basically your just hallway room. So what you want to do is make it straight up hallway, coming down to the back, and not too deep. And uh, the reasons behind this I talk about in the video. But basically in terms of aesthetics, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, here in this case I just made it look like an access way into maybe further in your base. What I did is I put a door here, put blocks here and here, and then made a control pad here uh, and made it slightly open to make it look like this area is larger than it seems. So that's basically how you'd make one example of a hallway entrance. You could also make just a container or make all sorts of different, uh, different interpretations of what you want your hallway to look like. So throw on some aesthetics. Over here I have the same hallway. Um, but I turned that hallway into an L room. So the L room has a little pocket on the side that allows humans to hide out of sight and also as they're shooting move further and further back and keep shooting until they get back here. So it gives them a little further time to shoot at the zombies as the zombies approach and the humans can hide or a zombie can hide here. So it's a little different. Um, the aesthetics for this room, I kept the door theme consistent, made it shut. And what I did in the sort of alcove on the side is I made it look like this is where you would go to open up this door. So what I did over here is I have these two decorative pieces, glass sails, stuck them right like this. Then this piece here is actually just um, part of a sniper nest, so I submerge it and use one of the wings basically and suck it in like this. Then over here I put two blocks, just the corner sticking up to make it look like wires. Then over here what I did is I have a column piece here, a railing in the decorative section here. That blue glowing piece is actually just a small bit of a um, tin cup so the rest is hidden behind there and then of course I put different objective pieces capture place and so like that to tie it all together so it looks like a really nice thing that's what you want you, you want to do is take the ideas from the basic layout that I pointed out and then throw on your different aesthetics so going off the door theme I made it look like this alcove had a purpose um, and now we're gonna keep going on over here is gonna be the window room uh, see again the video for details about this but basically you have the door here uh, short rush distance and so whoever's here is going to be shooting at the windows a lot so what I did is I made small windows and inclines that you can go up and shoot uh, and then retreat and shoot again uh, you can also hide from the zombies wait for them to come in and assassinate them or whatever so that's the idea behind this room uh, as you can see with all of these there are different ways to put together your walls well, I, what I like to do is use brace larges because you can lay them down sideways make a nice long wall or you can put them up and down and make these kind of bits like this to put together your wall. It looks nice, it's got a nice color scheme, front and back is very aesthetically pleasing and it, uh, I don't know, I just like the look and this is kind of what I use a lot but we'll keep going on with the different rooms and I'll show you guys basically all types of things you can do. So now we're going to move on to the two entrance rooms. So if you saw the video, I talked about two entrance rooms. There's primary, primary entrances, and then there's primary, secondary entrances. And the way you want to go about doing primary, secondary entrances is, I'll outline this quickly. One entrance has a barricade, one entrance slows the zombies down, one entrance has uh, more firepower on it, and one entrance has uh, sight lines. So I'll go over those in, uh, in a little more detail. So over here, this is going to be one of the rooms that uses a barricade to make a minor entrance. So as you can see, simple two entrance room, main entrance is here, secondary entrance is here. Uh, the secondary entrance is obviously going to have a barricade in it. This piece up here, which can be knocked out of the way, um, and it'll slow the zombies down as they kind of punch their way in. So that's what you want to do with these rooms is make a secondary entrance so that initially humans get an advantage by just having to cover up this entrance here 
It's very easy to defend, but over time the zombies will bash that, their way down there. Uh, just a note on barricades, usually you want to use a covenant crate as a barricade just because they're much lighter and it'll be easier for the zombies to hit it out of the way with the sword, whereas if you use a crate, um, it's going to be much harder, them for, uh, harder for them to do so. So that's just kind of a standard for infection now. And then the rooms, uh, what's kind of nifty about this room is I got away from the brace larges and I use these platform Y large pieces. So as long as, as well as showing you the different types of rooms, I showed you how you can make the different types of rooms. So over there, that was all brace larges and stuff like that. Over here, I'm showing you how to do it with different platforms. So platform Y larges are good. Submerge them, you get a nice, interesting looking wall piece and you can put them together at different angles and stuff like that to make your room. And then I'll go over different aesthetics and stuff you can place inside. Um, but always first start at the layout design, um, then work your way with aesthetics and stuff like that. Now the next room I talked to you guys about was slow. So you're going to have to find some way to slow the zombies down. So here's the main entrance to this room right here. And the slow entrance is going to be this ventilation opening right here. Because the zombies will have to come jump up here. Once they're in here, they're going to move around slowly, and then they're going to get here. And by that time, the humans know they're coming because of the radar. So that's an example of a slow entrance. Uh, and just to point out, this room, again, I use platforms. Here, staircase pieces are actually very useful. Lift one up. If there's nothing going to be, if there's going to be nothing on the other side of the map, you might as well use this to save budget. It's $10, and it is pretty wide, and it has a nice coloring to it. So you can put that down. And there you go, it makes a nice wall piece, shakes it up a bit, and it's cheap. Uh, also with the room design, you can see I kind of went here for angles, not just the clear-cut uh, perpendiculars, but I threw in some angles just to change up the geometry of the room, so that's what you want to do. And then, I guess we'll go over this a little bit more. So you have the main entrance here, secondary entrance over there. I didn't want um, humans to be too powerful in this position, um, because if you're sitting here, well then you can keep an eye on both entrances right away and you can be on a swivel. It's a little too powerful. So what I did is I added a line of sight blocker right there so that zombies can drop down and hide there and that'll reduce the potency of humans sitting here because they'll have to kind of move up and take out the zombie there. So that's something you want to do on your, uh, in your rooms is take care of sight lines. Another cool thing about having this area here is humans can actually come and post in here and defend. And the nice thing about this is you have really nice dependency and teamwork working. Um, because both of these areas are interconnected if a human's sitting out here, they will shut down any zombies trying to come at them in that direction. Their weak point is here. Same for humans sitting on this room. They can shut down any zombies coming through there, but their weak point is here. So the weak point is something that both rooms share. So you're going to see uh, a lot of teamwork being used in order to fortify this position. Uh, and Forge isn't letting me come in here. But that's what you want to do is stress teamwork on your maps. And of course, instead of having just a straight up uh, hallway here, I added these small platform pieces to make it look like it's been kind of broken down uh, some sort of covering that used to be there so that's what I did to add more theme to it moving on over here is going to be a sightline room now again I changed up the way I used the wall uh, the way I built the walls this one kind of highlights blocks for blocks I tend to be pretty pretty limited with what the, with what I use excuse me um, three by three shorts I find are very useful because on one side they're pretty large uh, they have a nice interesting cover on the back side it's all glass I wouldn't recommend using that so use this side it's nice and then blocks use 2x4s and 2x3s those are all very good look nice put them on different angles up and down sideways whatever uh, they're pretty good so back to the kind of the idea behind the sightline room is if I'm sitting out here uh, imagine for a second that those walls were made out of brace larges then I would have no idea when the zombies are coming and so that would make this room much harder to defend because it's so much more unpredictable but now that there's glass I can tell when the zombies are coming and if the humans are holding out here they see for example there's no co zombies coming this way they can focus all their attention on that door and the second someone spots a zombie on their way here then everyone can shift over so it kinda helps the humans out also another thing you can do is uh, in your room set up a sort of trap so this is the main entrance here Humans are going to mainly cover that. Zombies are mainly going to come in. Over here, what you can do is set up a trap uh, using all sorts of things. In this case, it was explosives. This would be a minor entrance because it only takes one human to guard this. He sees the zombies coming. He can either blow it up from here or, actually what's cool, 
with the the glass is he can blow it up from here so you see a horde of zombies coming toss a grenade in and it should detonate your trap there you go so that's kind of cool and you can play around with the timing of the explosives and stuff like that with like that and it's actually not overpowered because if you think of it even if you put these on uh, maximum uh, minimum count at uh, the same as maximum that means there's always gonna be some of these on the map the thing is though if you're playing with limited ammo I'm gonna be wasting my ammo blowing these up all the time so I may just get one free zombie kill but it's wasting my ammo so it is kind of a trade-off and it does have a cool uh, kind of change to the gameplay so instead of you using your bullets directly on the zombie you're using it on the explosive so it does have that balancing effect on gameplay and it's just a nice twist to your infection map so we'll keep going on now with two entrances um, another type of two entrance room with a major and minor entrance is going to be using firepower now firepower usually comes in the sense of a turret so the thing actually first I'll talk about this room uh, I've been showing the different ways you can build walls not just with uh, wall coliseums but with first brace larges platforms more platforms blocks here I use basically all inclines uh, so what you can do is I'll go ahead and whip this out real quick is go to incline and what's nice actually is you can go bridge large um, then what you want to do is put 15 degrees or something just so you get it down to um, it's on the right axis that you want it turn off your rotation snap and at this point you're gonna go to edit coordinates and edit the pitch as you see this it's gonna start rotating and 27 degrees is gonna make it flat so that's very important if you want to make a nice flat wall uh, you edit the pitch to make a perfectly flat wall and you can use this if you're running out of blocks or other pieces um, because that's something that's important when you're forging is you want to make sure to use your objects efficiently so usually people have extra people have extra um, extra inclines because they aren't just they aren't used that much blocks go very quickly so try and use inclines wherever possible and say I wanted to do maybe something that was flat going this way well then I would go back into my uh, my pitch and I would just fool around with this until it looks just about flat so it looks like 63 in this degrees is going to come out giving me a nice wall so that's what I did for these and then throw in these uh, circular pieces around here and now back to the idea behind this room is it would seem without the turret that these are two major entrances but what the turret does is it effect effectively reduces one of the entrances at a time into a minor entrance so here you go this door right here is now a minor entrance because it's got a hail of gunfire th coming through it the cool thing about having a turret is the minor entrance can switch if there's more pressure that way that's now the minor entrance so the turret adds a lot to the gameplay it makes it more strategic if humans see that there's a huge horde of zombies coming one way or another the turret can shift um, and another cool thing about this is the turret can be ripped off so he can be kind of permanently watching here, get it closer, dodge in and out, or the turret can be moved around. So that's another, another cool dynamic. So that's about it, guys, for this transition of the layout design to the layout implementation in Forge. So I I hope you enjoyed go I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I'll bring you more and more of these different infection tutorials. This has been just a basic one on how to implement your rooms. So once again, I hope you enjoy. This has been Oakley High Def with the Halo Forge Epidemic, and I'm signing out. Thank you.